God is God. When you are down, God is God. When you are up, God is God. When you are weak, God is God. When you are strong, God is God. When you are low, God is God. Your condition can never change. He's still almighty God. Having gone around the world 42 times, end to end, I now know God doesn't give people no. He carries their name from them. Somebody say big hallelujah. Stand to your feet, please. Thank you for doing that. Father, we join our hearts together to ask for your divine intervention in the lives of your people. You told me to tell the church whom you cannot help the world can help them. Whom you cannot heal, the world cannot better their lives. Whom you cannot bless, the world cannot bless. Whom you cannot lift, the world cannot lift. I stand here tonight to declare by the authority of your word that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Heaven and earth can pass away. His words will never pass away. Just as the singers sang tonight. We believe in your word Lord. That heaven and earth can change. But Jesus is unchangeable. He is the unchanging changer. The repairer of the broken lives. The healer of the sick. The blesser of the poor. The lifter of the damned children. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is our God today. Amen. Speak for thy servants here. It. In Jesus name we pray. And everybody say Amen. 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 Before you sit down, I want to ask you again. Is the church becoming a religious ground for you or a place of solution? Answer me. Do you think God has answer? Do you believe that God has solution? Yes. Let me say this before you sit down. I know you are very anxious to sit down. If God ceases to be God, you cease to live. I say this to you. Clean and clear. If we who are believers can 
can no more lean on God for answer and trust Him for remedying or repairing or healing or changing our course in life we have no right to be in the church that's number one number two the world cannot be saved through our testimonies if we are going to believe, be believers this year and be unbelievers next year no one will be saved by your testimony of sudden salvation sudden deliverance sudden miracle sudden healing and later all you testified to before leave you and you begin to practice unbelief in the church Christians, Christian life is not a temporary life it's a permanent life of victory night and day it's unfortunate that the church never never expect because they are in the church to encounter problem that's why a book like that book faith for all life's term is written to help you know if the desert is never short of sand and the ocean is not short of water God is not short of grace give Jesus a hand before you sit down here and sit down John chapter 2 John chapter 2 John chapter 2 beginning from verse 1 and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage and when they wanted wine the mother of Jesus said unto them said unto him they have no wine Jesus said unto her woman what have I to do with thee mine hour is not yet come his mother looked to the faces of those that sat together in wondering for lack of wine and said unto them whatsoever he said unto you kindly do it and there we are set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two of or three fuckings apiece Jesus said unto them the pot has always been yours fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and he said unto them now look at what God has done draw out and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it and when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him every man at the beginning doeth set for good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now verse 11 this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him may the Lord bless his words Amen, Amen. 
I want to speak on what I have entitled Divine Intervention. Say that with me. Divine Say it in English. Divine Say it as a Christian. Divine Say it as if you know what you are talking about. Divine, Divine intervention. intervention. Do you believe in that? Yes. Fine. That's what I want to pick out of this place. I was talking to our student pastors in a joint section of our Bible college students last week. Almost 800 of them gathered together. Almost 800 for more feats of life. And I looked at the people that have been in government for 35 years. Left government to come to Bible college. Police. Permanent secretaries, good secretaries of government, heads of department, educational leaders, left their profession to come to be trained in our institute. As I looked at these great men, now when I was a young preacher, some of them when I go to their offices, I wait for hours to try to see them in their, on their seat. Now students in our Bible college. The tears of joy flowed out of my eyes. I'm so glad you didn't do me bad when I met you 17, 18 years ago. You advised me on what to do. And now, the building you gave me counsel about is now where you are a student. And he looked at me and said, that's why I'm here. Everything you have ever believed you want to do in the name of the Lord, you succeeded to do it because you believe with God all things are possible and I began to cry in that service not to hit me not to beat me but I just knew I, I was thinking that man did me bad 19 years ago I have the opportunity now to revenge I could give him cutlass to cut grass he wouldn't say no even though he's 68 whatever I thought I would do if you, if you stop thinking good you start to think bad I began to say, look at what this man did. He was not a believer. He was not a Christian that time. He was a nominal churchgoer. But look at how much grace has done him favor. Not only born again with grandchildren, but coming to Bible college, known all over the country as a big government official for years. And now, in the Bible school, I began to say, good, good, Doing good is good. Doing good is good. Say that with me. Doing good is good. Uh, and I said this to one preacher today. If you because of one evil start to do bad, you find that all the good you've done before were never good. So doing good is good. Say it again. Doing good is good. Sometimes you are challenged. I as a man who deal with millions of people every week by television thousands upon thousands every day by church service and thousands upon thousands of people through church services every week and mixing with thousands of pe preachers and pastors every day of my life no day that I live I do not meet with preachers every day whether I'm at home or abroad whether I'm flying or traveling I meet preachers everywhere in the world and almost every nation we go in 124 countries I see those who have seen me before I can hide therefore the only option I have is to try to do good every time because only the bad you do people will remember if you do it once if you have done 10 million good the day you do one bad that's the one they will remember you did so I try my best as often, even if it's not coming in for me. If, it's, if I'm down, weak, and somebody needs help, I wouldn't say, do you see how I feel? I'm down. No. I try to lift the person. The Bible says, while you are lifting others, you are lifting yourself. While you are helping the weak, you are helping yourself. Here in this story of John chapter 2, my life has borrowed from the life of Christ. 
several characteristics that are, that is helping me in handling handling a world ministry. It's hard to be a leader. It's tough to be a leader. But the challenge of leadership is being able to subdue yourself when you are down. To say, it's true, I'm almost down. Devil, you knock me down, I'm not going to accept a knockout. I'm going to stand and fight and win. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Never a day so ugly that you can add beauty to it. Never you find yourself in a day you are so down that you are not able to lift somebody. Never you find a day you are so sick that you can't pray for the sick. The sicker you are, the more sick you should look for to pray. Because when you lay hand on them to pray, you can take the faith of the sick to be well for yourself to be well. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. When you are poor, and a poor man comes and says, I know you have money, give me money. Please, brother, borrow and give to the poor. Because if they ask you to help them when you are down, it means God has confidence in you that you are not as down as you think you are down. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. That's the life I live every day. When I wake up, the first people I see after morning prayer are people who have need. No matter how weak I am, I try to be strong. Because... People are looking up to me every day. They don't care whether I slept at 4 o'clock and woke up at 5. They want strength from me. I can't say, do you know the time I went to bed? I'm tired. Let me rest. No. I can't. It's, it's, it's a life. Jesus, unless a man deny himself, carry the cross daily, he can't be my disciple. Christianity is not a life of excuse. It's a life of uses. It's not a life of excuses. Excuse me, I'm down. No. Excuse me, I'm tired. No. Excuse me, I'm poor. No. You can't take excuse. God will teach you to turn all your excuses to uses. Somebody say loud, Amen. amen. Please respond to me. I'm not a Baptist. Talk to me. <laughs> turn your life to tune. Turn your life. Every energy God has given you is to be of service to mankind while you have life in you. Choir. Amen. Good. You still, you still have a little amen. Choir. Amen. Choir. Amen. Musicians. Amen. <laughs> All right. Let's look at this scripture very, very divinely because I want to speak on divine intervention. Verse 1 says here, The third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. The mother of Jesus was there. Let's look at the life of the mother of Jesus. Here is a woman that had unexpected visitor to her home, probably between the age of 18 and 22. This man came, his name is Angel Gabriel. He said, The power of the Most High has come to rest on you. And that which is within you is from above. Mary didn't know what to say. In conclusion, she said, Be it unto me as the Lord has wished. She didn't know how to respond. She never knew known a man before. Here she is told by the angel who never lied, You are pregnant. That which you are going to give birth to shall be a holy one. For the Spirit of the Lord God has rested upon you. First she was afraid to tell Joseph. Afraid to tell any of her relations. That's why the Bible said that Mary pondered these things in her heart. She didn't know who to tell. She's never known a man yet pregnant. Who will you tell? Finally, Joseph knew. And the Bible says Joseph decided to privately send her away. But the angel came to her, to him, and said, Don't touch her. She and God have contract. The 
person that is in the room will be called Emmanuel, God with us. So Mary knew who Christ is before he was born. So when she was invited to this marriage, she also gave the son invitation. The Bible said, and both Jesus was called and the disciples to the marriage. Everything you want to do in life, that you put God ahead, when you put God first, when trouble comes, God will appear at the scene. When you put God ahead of your crisis, God will become a cure when crisis show up. When you bring God ahead of your schedule, when you are about to scale over danger, the lifting power of the Most High shall raise you above the cloud. The man who was going to wed, I do not know as a theologian, but I know as a believer, the invitation must have come from the man who was about to marry. And when he invited Christ, his mother and the disciples, just as he invited all the guests, he never knew that the man who would turn water to wine was the one he invited. Everything you do as a Christian, particularly you saints in civilized nations, Christianity is not for convenience. It's for all weather. Christianity is for when it's rough. Christ is Christ. When it's dirty, Christ is Christ. When it's tough, Christ is Christ. When it's bad, God is God. When it's terrible, God is God. When it's terrifying, God is God. When you are down, God is God. When you are up, God is God. When you are weak, God is God. When you are strong, God is God. When you are low, God is God. Your condition can never change God. He is still Almighty God. Amen. Can somebody say Amen to that? Amen. I read in Job 36, verse 4 and 5. Turn Job to me. They will hear your English. They are not hearing mine. But they are listening. I know that. Job 36, verse 4 and 5. You will see a scripture that will help you here. 36, verse 4 and 5. Read it loud, not as if you are singing. But line by line, brother. Very loud. Verse, Job 36, verse 4 and 5. Loud and line by line. For truly my word shall not be false. Everybody say that. Truly. Truly. My word, my word shall not be false. Shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with me. is with you. Amen. The one that is not crying when you are crying is with you. Amen. You know what I love about God? He knows when to send the messenger of peace to your stand. When everything about you is hot, you look this side hot, you look this side hot, you look back hot, you look front hot, and you know today is Friday and everybody is going to look up to you in the service. He knows how to send you a pastor. 
and say be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your neighbor be cool. <laughs> do, do you understand what I'm talking? Yeah. When the pastor cries, the church dies. If a pastor is weeping, I used to, I used to face some situation in Africa as the church began to grow. You see, the good thing about God. Somebody came the other day to my office and said, I, I, I was dreaming last night. He said, I was in a dream. He said, God told me I was going to face trial. I said, I said brother, it's a lie. God never tells anyone when he's going to face trial. He shows you the throne. He never shows you the pit and prison. He knows that if he shows you the prison and the pit, you are going to run back. So all he shows you is the throne. That's God. God never shows any human being test. God will never show you you are standing in the court and a lawyer throwing bullets to you. Never. God never show you in the dream of vision. Police arrest you and handcuff you. Never. He only show you when you are dancing and singing and rejoicing. Because in God there is no tribulation. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So anytime you say, when I was sleeping last night, I saw people fl- beating me. God never shows that to people. He only shows you when you are lifting people up. Because he knows that if he shows you when you are beaten, you will never follow his way. Same thing, when you are going to build a big church, he never shows you the crisis that is on the way. He shows you the good church. You see, big, large church. If you read my book, Fire His Bone, I, I dreamt I saw a mighty large tree lost leaves no single leaf on it dried from the root to the top and the Lord said stand here I stood as I stood under that mighty tree with the scourging sun an old lady of about 80 or 90 years was coming with heavy load on her head and the Lord said rush to her help her bring the the load under the tree for her to rest from the sun. I looked up. The tree had no leaves. The sun was scorching. I ran to this lady, carried her load on my shoulder and took her by hand and began to come under the tree. When we arrived under the tree, one leaf germinated on top of the tree. <coughs> when I dropped the load down, I looked out again. Two men were coming, heavy load on their head old and God said run to them help them carry it I began to carry these people's load on my head from where I saw them under the tree to bring them under the tree everyone that I brought under the tree leaf began to germinate on top of the tree until I who was helping God so exhausted because of the loads I've carried from people and the tree began to grow many leaves and the Lord said if you are tired of carrying the load from them alone Ask people to join you. So I said to all our behaviors, I said, help me reach out to the ones that are coming still with loads on their head. And thousands followed me. And we went out, began to help people bring their loads under the tree. The tree now became a big tree with leaves green on top of it and thousands below. And the Lord said to me, that is how your church will be. If you follow my instruction. You will not be the one to do the job alone. I'll give you people from all over the world. And everybody you help. We help to help others. Today I can give thanks to God. Having gone around the world. 42 times. End to end. I now know. God doesn't give people load. He carries their load from them. Somebody say big hallelujah. hallelujah. His words are not false. And the mighty one is with thee. If nobody else believes, you should believe it. Amen. Next verse. Behold, God is mighty and despised. God is mighty. God is mighty. Say it again. God is mighty. Say it again. God is mighty. Now say this with the God I serve. The God I serve. The one that 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 I serve. The God that I serve, that I serve is mighty. Is mighty. The God, the God that I serve, that I serve is mighty. Is mighty. Do you hear that? 
is not weak. He's not tired. He's not down. He's strong every time. Their ears will not blow. So just give me some. The God you and I serve is mighty. When economy of the nation is down, God is mighty. When oil business run low, God is mighty. When gold plunge, God is mighty. When businesses win, God is mighty. When stock exchange go down, God is mighty. When the man in charge of stock exchange in England is removed, God is mighty. When Thatcher is no more there, God is mighty. When Reagan and Bush are gone, God is mighty. When you and I leave the scene, God will still be almighty God. Is anybody hearing me? Where you find yourself doesn't change God from whom he is. He is always strong and mighty. He is mighty and and despised not. And despiseth not any. Do you think they have that? Try it one more time. And despiseth not any. What does that mean in English? He doesn't despise anybody. Any lawyer here? Anybody who went to law school have any idea? Let <laughs> me look at you small, but come. Anybody who has a new Canadian teacher? Who has ever taught? If you are 50 years old, come on, Peter, you ever taught? <laughs> Come on, come on, English. Come on, come on, lawyer. Come on, tell me what this word means. Loud, not like uh, what, what, what it means. Yes, tell us what it means. It means that God doesn't matter how small you are. It doesn't matter how infinitesimally small you are. God will not despise you. He'll Don't look after me. you. I know that. Tell <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, you, you told me. I'll it doesn't matter what your condition. It does. Um, it doesn't matter what your condition you are there. No, it doesn't yeah. matter how small you are, so you are hearing him. it doesn't matter where you live it doesn't matter who you are okay. it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter how you are God will not despise you you ran too fast huh. <laughs> God it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter how you are it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter what you are it doesn't matter who um, why you are God will not despise you he is concerned about you alright now, now come on come on now tell us from legal point this is not caught up you are not defending anybody but if the Bible says he does not despise any, what would that mean? <laughs> Where's your wife? Let her come and look at him. So. <laughs> I can't do better than Peter did, but it means that he won't think of you as a worm. <laughs> In one word, in compound word, God will not look at you as a wimp or as a worm. He has value for you. That's what you mean. Can anybody say, God has value on me? God has put a price on me. Say it loud. I'm esteemed by God. I'm not demeaned. That's what God is saying. He does not, whether you are a cripple, blind, deaf. I preached this message two days ago in, in Lagos. And a big bank chairman came to me and said, Sir, this is the biggest, this is the greatest message I've ever heard from anybody. That God despised not any. Say it with me. God despised not any. He said, tell me in simple word, what do you mean by this? And I said, I mean this. If God says because you are blind, you are a nobody, He has made a nobody. And God can never make a nobody. Are you hearing me? 
the blind is made in the image of God. The lame is made in the image of God. The dumb and deaf is made in the image of God. So when God said, who are you? He said to himself, I made who are you? Are you hearing me? Yes. Look, look at the story in the Bible. It's found in Matthew. It's found, it's found in uh, Matthew 14. It's found in Luke 5. In Mark 5. It's found in Luke. It's found in John. The Bible said the woman with the issue of blood came from behind and said in her heart, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole from my plague. And Jesus, after the woman touched him, said, Who touched me? Peter said, There be many of us that push you and press upon thee. How do you say, Who touched me? Jesus said, Somebody touch me. Say that everybody. Somebody touch me. God was making somebody out of a nobody. From a licking blood woman. God said she was a nobody when she came. But when she touched me, she became somebody. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? He despises not, thank you my beloved son. How did you put it again? You are not a worm. <laughs> more, more, put it legal. more, more legally, no matter who you are, he will represent you. So we have an advocate with God. Thank you sir. Thank you. You, you won my appeal court. <laughs> now, no matter where you find yourself, God will represent you. Can anybody say amen to Here was Jesus sitting down, invited, not knowing God knows everything, but at least he wasn't aware that they needed him for a miracle. He wasn't aware that a whole new life to be started was going to start in jeopardy. This man marrying who invited Christ and disciples didn't know the man he invited was a miracle worker. He sat The priest was saying every good thing. He was listening. After the marriage ceremony they went now for the reception where glory and glamour was to be displayed. No sooner that the wedding was over and ceremony was on, the mother of Jesus was approached. We are short of wine. He, she heard them panicking behind. No wine, no wine, no wine, no wine, no wine, no wine. She looked, she must have said to somebody, what did they say? And they said, they are short of wine. She rose up and went to Christ. I said, son, I just found out they are short of wine. Can you do something? How did she find Christ to ask questions? He was invited. If you have never been inviting Christ to your marriage, do so today. If you have not invited him to your job, no matter how small that business is, coffee house business, Babi saloon business, Jerry Coy house business, roast and fry hair business, <laughs> biscuit and chip business, fish and chip business, chicken business, bookstore business, any type of job at all, including ministry, invite him there. If he's ahead, whatever comes behind, he will handle it for you. I wish you had my English. If you bring him ahead, whatever comes behind, he can handle it. You do hear me, young man? I know you to be in business. I've visited your business place. I hope you are still there. Don't stay there too long. You move now. God bless you. That's I'd like to hear that. Continue moving. Even when you are shaking, keep on moving. Even when it's up, keep on moving. No fish jumps out of this sea 
because of wave. <laughs> you never see a big shark say the water is too strong, it's pushing me so hard. I'm going to live on the land. No. The fish know that if you jump from the water to land, there are many fishermen without hook who will catch and eat. You will give thanks to God for your jumping from your crisis to where they are when they are looking for who will jump out. You never see a man on a race horse or horse race who wants to win prize. Because the horse is galloping, bah, bah, he said, my, this speed is too much, and you are running too fast. Then jump out of the horse. He will die, and the horse will go ahead. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Let's learn to turn our crisis to strengthening. Let's learn to turn all our obstacles to miracle opportunity. Let's not become wimps. Every time we find ourselves in a shaking situation, we fall and begin to crawl and weep like babies. Let's not do that. When your marriage shake, you know sugar is coming right behind it. When your business shake, you know promotion is coming. When your ministry shake, you know God wants to lift you high. Nothing that is big that never started small. And put it down, Peter, the way to top is bottom. Write it down. I give you my pen. I have my birthday pen for you. The way to the top is bottom. Somebody say that. The way to the top is bottom. That's why. Why did God create ground? So you can learn to get up. Why did He create the sky? So you cannot limit your view. Why, was, why did He create the ocean? So you can learn to conquer events. You think you just come to church and sing those little choruses with little band, with little piano, with little organ, with little choir, uh, choir singing, then pronounce benediction, you come here struggling and live here crawling. That's not why the church is here. The church is here to train you that though the lion roars, it will never bite nor kill. The larger the trouble, the bigger the testimony. Somebody say hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. I teach people at home every day. No boxer that sees the height of the opponent and surrenders can be a champion. Never. Bruno versus Lewis. Fine. <laughs> Muhammad Ali versus Liston. Fine. What's the name of the big man that was 44 years and fought two months ago? George Homer. George Homer versus whosoever. Smoking your freezer. Anyone. 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 The bigger your opponent, the stronger you pretend to be strong. When a big man knows you are not afraid of him, he will be wondering. Look at David versus Goliath. Goliath, 10 foot high, 6 feet wide. Four feet deep. <laughs> Stood. And say, Rat, where are you going with your little catapult? And the rat said, To make history. <laughs> say with me, To make history. If Goliath killed David, no news. But if David killed Goliath, he has news. Amen. If, if, Antelope kill tiger. News. If tiger kill antelope, no news. Do you believe what I'm saying to you today? Make history where there is none. Make news where there is none. Give life to where there is death. Give joy to where there is sorrow. Give power to where there is fainting. Make your voice heard all over the world. Done because the wall is falling, you join them to fall. The wall is looking for lifters and not co-fallers. If 
in your effort to move forward, you find yourself on the ground, rise up, shake up the dust, start afresh. If God make you fall, He will make you rise. God never leaves anyone where He met them. Every time He saw the lame, rise and walk. The blind, I say unto thee, see. The leper, be cleansed. The dead, be raised. Jesus has not changed. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The marriage was going on and suddenly the mother said, no wine, no wine, what do we do? Jesus said, don't trouble me. This woman, this woman turned and said to them, I've told him, whatever happened from now, my son will do something. Whatsoever he says to you, do it. I wish every Christian would be able to bow their head in crisis time and say, God, stood up he said what do you have around he said six water pot he said fill it to the brim pastor Ruth help your husband with this message when I finish take this tape and hear it again the man who was wedding the man who was marrying didn't know the crisis at the back he was so concentrated on the marriage that he didn't know the no why God blinded him from involvement of lack and the greatest grace is for you to have grace not to know what is happening wrong behind you is anybody hearing what I'm saying God overclouded his eye he was so concentrated on what the man within them was saying that when they were saying no why he said I will <laughs> the life do you part I will no wine, I will. <laughs> for better, for worse, I will. In richer, for poorer, I will. He was concerned with I will. That he didn't bother, but I will not. And I have known that was at the back. Suddenly, good news burst out. Jesus said, feel it to the brim. Feel it to the brim. Fill the empty water pot to the brim. They fill it to the brim. I say, draw out. The impossible has taken place. Divine intervention has taken place. They drew out and took it straight to the governor of the feast. Ruth, it was not a minor wedding because governor was there. But the governor who was the master of ceremony, the governor of the feast said you gave us bad one to start you are giving us sweet one to end that's my prophecy for all of you here tonight no matter how bad you start you will end sweet stand to your feet Join hand with somebody. May I make little request for you? All of you come closer here. Make God your boss. Everybody come nearer. Come closer. Choir, come leave your seat. Move. Some those of you then move closer. I believe God sent me here for a purpose. I believe God brought me today back home here for a reason. I don't know what you are struggling with. And if it seems there's no way out, the master is already here. No losses to where there is profit. No defeat to where Jesus is present. No shame to where there is glory. No 
anguish to where there is anchor. No tears where there is cheers. No downcast when the lift is around. He said, dip the cup to the water you fill with to the brim. Test it. There's already a divine intervention. The man marrying didn't know. But after the miracle happened, the governor said, excuse me, you brought us here to start life with bitter wine. Why give us sweet at the end? Before the man knew they were short of wine. God has already done it. I don't know what you have been battling with. I guarantee you God has done it. God has done it. God has done it. I told myself three days ago, the greatest privilege I have had, the greatest privilege, 35 years in the ministry, 55 years old in life, is the fact that I know before I met Christ, my life was full of crisis. Since I met Christ, He replaced my crisis with Christ. Christ is the bridge over troubled water. He is the God when He smote. He is the God when He's rough. He is God when He's tough. When you are a lion, then He comes to say to lion, Today, you eat no more human being. Is anybody hearing me? When you are in the fire, I shed up Meshach and Abednego. That is the first time in history fire will burn no one when God is there. The Bible said the fourth man was there in their midst. In the lion then, the lion of the tribe of Judah was among the lions and the other lions didn't know. So when they threw Daniel to the lions, he fell into his father's hand, who is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And you can't eat your child. You can only pet your child. Church is more than the song we sing from the uh, uh, song stand. Church is more than choir sing. Church is more than pastor preach. Church is more than we greet and hug one another. Church is, here am I Lord. Help me. And when life turns against you, turn to God. Jesus will never say no when you say yes. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah? I pray today that whatever be the crisis that confronted you before you came here, the man who has never lost any battle before is here to give you divine intervention. Bow your head and close your eyes. Eternal Father, you came to this marriage feast. The man that invited you knew not whom he invited. But when need came, you fought the battle behind him. You fought the war and won. And when the water turned to sweet wine, he who didn't know the battle that was going behind was told. Why did you start us with bad wine and ended it with sweet wine? That's the God we serve. Not minding where we are coming from, but concerned about where we are to take us to higher heights. Because you live, we can live also. I pray for everyone that came here with burden and load and tears and grief. Lord, let no one go back with the same tears. Let every sickness and disease and pain and aches die here tonight. Because we've invited you here. And because you are here ahead. Whatever come behind you can handle on our behalf. I pray that every heaviness in our hearts disappear. That the grace of God will appear. That the name of the Lord will be magnified. Intervene Lord. Intervene. Intervene tonight. Show your glory and power. Demonstrate your grace. And lift your people from where they have found themselves. To where they can smile like this man and his wife did. When they were told sweet wine had come. Lift your hands up everybody. I pray 
pray that these hands will be strong and powerful. I pray that these hands will touch success and victory. I pray that these hands will touch miracles on her. That your hand will lower from heaven and touch your hand from beneath. Our hands touching your hands means miracle. Touch us, Lord. Give us joy to rejoice in the God of our salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.